Well, welcome everybody to Webform 4.0, Surveys in Drupal Improved. Um, this session is going to be all about the Webform module, which I think probably most of you guys are, are already familiar with. Um, it's sort of one of the oldest, longest running uh, Drupal modules in existence um, that continues to kind of upgrade and, and be rele uh, relevant in each new version of Drupal. And the new version, Webform 4, uh, is an iteration on the current version of Webform um, that I think it will provide a whole bunch of new functionality and uh, APIs that everybody will find useful and powerful. Um, a little bit about myself. My name is Nate Haug. Um, I'm QuickSketch on Drupal.org and on Twitter. Um, and I work for the company Lullabots, um, doing development and consulting for them. Uh, and recently, I also started a company um, based around the Webform module called webform.com. Uh, and it's basically a hosted service. So if you like the Webform module and you have non-Drupal sites that you would like to use Webform on, uh, you can use the webform.com service to uh, empower your site with all of the functionality of Webform uh, as a service. And it makes it so that you can export it and then move it to a Drupal site at a later point in time. Um, so you can export not only your data, but actually all of the code that powers uh, webform.com into your own Drupal sites. And I think that um, if you really want to have a nice demo of Webform 4.0, you can just go and try it out there, because we're kind of running like the cutting edge version of just about everything that I'm going to be showing you guys today uh, on that website. So Webform 4, um, or Webform just in general, generally widely considered to be like the de facto standard in, in making surveys in Drupal. We're on the cusp of a 4.0 version. Um, it's usable right now. I made a, a, a DrupalCon uh, honorary release just uh, yesterday that is the beta 1 release. The final version of Webform 4 will probably be released uh, before the end of the year, targeting for November. Um, a big thing about Webform that separates it from something like um, Field Module is that it's really intended for your end users to be utilizing and creating forms. So like your editorial team, the same people that are creating um, articles and blog posts, if they also need to be empowered to build surveys, then Webform is an excellent choice for that task. And because it's designed for end users, it's, it's much more direct and less complicated than field module. Um, field module, when you're constructing all of your content types, and fields, you're really designing your database schema. Uh, Webform, on the other hand, dumbs it down a whole lot, where it's more about creating a form than it is a, about creating a database schema. And there are some downsides to that, but also some upsides that Webform allows you to have hundreds or thousands or even hundreds of thousands of forms on a single site. You can have as many web forms as you want, um, as opposed to content types, where after you create like 20 or 30 of them, it starts getting to have a, a performance drag on your site. Um, and sort of as an implication of that, because uh, Webform is not based on fields or entities, um, that also means that generally whenever you, you encounter a module that provides like a, a date field or a time field or something like that, that it won't work right out of the box with Webform. Usually there's a companion module that's like the Webform underscore whatever module, um, like postal code, for example. Like there's, there's usually a web form equivalent for pretty much any field out there. Um, but if you have one module for fields, you'll probably need to have another one for web form because they're basically separate systems. And the difference uh, between web form and fields is that fields generally, um, when your editors are creating content, they're creating content by like a few people are creating content that is made to be digested by a, a large number of people. And Webform is sort of the other way around, where you've got a huge number of end users who are on the front end of your site, maybe even anonymous users. And those are the users that are actually going to be filling out the form. And when they fill out the form, they're going to be sending these over to the editorial team or the administrative team. And the administrative team is really going to be the people that are looking at all of those submissions. So end users are filling out the form 
hundreds or thousands of times, uh, and it's only being reviewed by like a smaller subset. So it's like the reverse, basically, of what you normally think of for, for fields. Which, of course, fields can be used in this way, too. Um, and web form can be used in the opposite way also. But generally, this is the way that these, these things are, are meant to be used. Fields are generally for admins filling out forms. Web forms are for end users filling out forms. Um, there's an exception to this uh, um, editorial team looking at submissions only. And that's uh, a user who creates submissions. They always or can have the ability to edit their own submissions after they've filled it out. So if you've got some kind of system where you want a user to come, be able to come back and like edit the previous submissions or view them, um, they have the ability to do that. But generally, uh, end users don't see the submissions of other end users. They're, they're kind of uh, isolated from each other. So the web form interface um, generally is really pretty simple. When you enable the web form module, you'll get a new web form content type um, that when you create a new web form node, web forms are nodes, uh, all, of, all of the web form pieces of content will end up with two extra tabs on them, one for web form and then one for results. And when you look into the web form tab, you'll get a series of sub tabs here. Uh, the main one is the form components page, where you'll actually be listing out all of the individual components um, that are in, it, in a particular form. And web form 3, actually some later versions of web form 3, add this functionality, but I'll reiterate it here, because it's in, in all versions of web form 4 also. Um, when you add those new components, we've got a couple of new HTML5 friendly components now, so right out of the box. You don't need to install any other modules in order to have WebForm be HTML5 compatible. We've got support for all kinds of HTML5 things. Um, so normally, like uh, if you have a normal text field, you get a normal tech keyboard. I guess Dries mentioned this in the keynote this morning too. But if you have an email field, um, then you get a different keyboard that just matches the type of data that's going to be input. So a plain text field, you get like a normal text keyboard. And when you have an email field, you get like this keyboard that gives you an at symbol right there uh, whenever you're on a mobile device. It also provides some nice uh, inline validation. So if you type in an email, your browser generally will validate um, that email directly for you. And in addition to like an email field, we also have uh, an HTML5 number field, which again gives you a special keyboard for uh, individual number components. So back on the components page, so now we're moving through these tabs basically one at a time. If we go from the form components, uh, where you're generally going to be adding and modifying your forms, um, take a look at the conditionals tab. And this is brand new feature in, in Web Form 4 that I think a ton of people are really going to love. And that's conditional support, like really advanced conditional support, multiple conditions affecting multiple fields. Um, and it works on single page forms. So you can say like if a department is something, and we're going to actually do this in, in the hands-on demo, if a department is something, then hide or show a field set or a, a, a field on the same page. Or if you have a multiple page form, then you can hide the field on the next form, or you could skip the entire page. Um, Web Form 3 had some conditional support, but it was um, severely limited. You could only do one action ever, uh, and it would only work across multiple pages. In Web Form 4, we now have same page support and multiple options. It's, it's a lot better, and the interface is, is really great. And we'll go through that when we do the hands-on. So keeping moving through the tabs, um, the most common thing people do with web forms is when, they, when a user fills out the form, usually the user wants to get an email, or the administrator wants to get an email. So web form is a really good replacement for like contact module. If you want to have a, a much more elaborate uh, contact form that just has like one or two more fields, uh, or if you want to have multiple contact forms for different things, like a job application form versus the normal contact form, then you can set up a web form for each of those and have them behave differently. So when you set up a, an individual email in web form, uh, you get to choose like whether or not you want to email that to like a specific like hard-coded email address, uh, or you can send it to the value of a component. So this is useful, and we'll do this during the hands-on. Like if you want to send one email to the administrator of the website, but then you had the user type in their email address when they started filling out the form. It's really common that you'll want to send a receipt 
back to the user saying, you know, thank you for filling out the form. We received your submission. Here's a copy of it, um, and do that sort of thing. So you can make it so that you can send an email to any value of another component on, on the web form. So we have two types of components that you can send email to, like the email component, if you want to send the user receipt, uh, or if you have a select list. Um, this is new functionality in Web Form 4 also. If you have a select list now, you used to have to do this really weird thing where you would have to use a key, the email address you would have to use um, as the key, and then the value of the select list you would have to use as the label, which was a really terrible thing on a lot of levels. Now, in Web Form 4, when you uh, select a, a radio buttons or a select list as the destination for an email, it does this nice thing where uh, it automatically gives you a whole bunch of fields that match uh, the options in the select list. And you can choose, like, when this option is selected, send emails to these people. And you can comma separate them so you can send, like, if the user selects some particular category, send it to multiple email addresses at the same time. Uh, also new, uh, if, you if you were to scroll down further when configuring an email address, and we're going to go through this at the end, we also now have finally, finally, real Drupal 7 style tokens. So all of the normal token ability um, you now have in Webform, Webform uses it for everything, um, and it provides some of its own tokens to make it so that you can pull out the submitted values that the user filled out in the form and include that in like the uh, the email templates, the confirmation messages, uh, the redirect URLs, anywhere where there's any text field in Drupal default values, you can populate those values with tokens now, which is much more powerful than the old Web Form 3 style tokens. So the form settings page, not a whole lot has changed on, on this page from, from Web Form 3. Uh, you still have all of the mishmash settings that you could possibly want to customize the functionality of your form. We still have um, the ability to do things like save as draft or save automatically in between pages, um, options for limiting access control, limiting the number of uh, submissions per hour or the number of submissions per user. We did add the ability to limit the total number of submissions also, which we didn't have uh, previously, so more limiting options than there were in the past. Uh, and a neat thing that was added just very recently is we finally added real built-in support for progress bars. So if you have a multiple page form that has like say four or five pages, um, you usually want to indicate to the user how far along in the process of filling out a form they are. And there's now just simply an option here for enabling a progress bar and a couple of options to customize how that progress bar actually appears. So by default, if you turn it on and you've got a couple of page breaks, um, then it will end up looking something like this, where you, you have, this is an example with four pages. And you can decide whether or not you want the confirmation page to be included in that progress bar or not. So it makes it so that when you get to the last page, you know the, the last item in the progress bar is, is then highlighted. If you were doing like a, a confirmation message that is just a message rather than the confirmation page, you'd want to turn that off. So there'd only be three steps in here because the fourth step would just be a message saying, thanks for filling out the form, and then redirect you to some other place on the site. So that's it for the main web form tabs. Not a whole lot uh, changing in there. The web form results uh, tab is very similar. Not a whole lot has changed here either. The submissions listing, currently uh, we're working towards replacing all of the listings in all of WebForm with views. So WebForm 4 depends on views and ctools now, and we have full view support in WebForm 4, which is really great. So we can access all of the data, and we can access all of the submissions uh, directly in views now. We're just not using it built in with the module yet, like out of the box. But we're planning on converting all of the listings in all of Drupal to use views pretty much everywhere. So every view you have uh, in all of web form, you'll be able to override and change. Like I know a lot of people don't care about like the IP address or the username when it comes to looking at submissions. So you'd be able to customize that and drop those out of these listings. You can do that today. It's just not, not built out of the box yet. Um, the analysis tab. Uh, got an overhaul recently where the analysis tab used to show you all of the information about all of the components all at the same time. But after thinking about it, um, we found that the analysis tab really shouldn't be giving you analysis 
out of by default on things like text fields and text areas and email addresses, just because there, there isn't a whole lot of useful statistics that you can pull out of like an email address. Like whether or not the user filled it out is about, and like the length of the string, like that's about all that you can do as far as analysis goes. You can still enable that functionality, but by default, we now only generate analysis on like the select lists and grid components because those are ones that you know there's a finite number of choices, and so you can generate um, some useful numbers on like you want to see like uh, how many people selected a particular choice. So with this redesign, we we segmented out the useful data, like the analytic data, from the uh, peripheral data. Like we used to combine it all together. Like if you had select or other module enabled, you can make it so that a user can select like a finite number of choices and then select the last one, which is the other checkbox. And then they would type in something that was other than the, the options that, that were given. And previously we just jammed all that data together, which made it really hard to actually provide some like useful data on it. But now we separate that information out, the primary uh, analytics and basically all the peripheral data. And it makes it so that we can now finally chart this information. So there's a, um, two modules, actually, that came out just really recently, um, <laughs> terribly named Webform Chart and Webform Charts. So one's plural, one's singular. I'm sorry, I hate it when that happens. But they, they both do a really excellent job of charting data in Webform due to this new uh, ability. So this is when you enable Webform Charts module. Um, the exact same page, that analytics page, now includes charts on every single one of those analytics. So you can take that same data and then chart it out, and then you have a really nice visualization of, of all of the results that are on those pages. Another cool thing about these charts that we're going to do on the hands-on is they also provide tokens, which means that you can use these charts in other places. Like anywhere you have access to tokens, you can then pull out charts and like basically make like reports, if you will, anywhere you want, as long as you can access that node through a token. Like you have a node reference field, point to a web form, pull out some charts out of it. It's pretty cool. Um, the table page, um, table page just generally just lists everything, all, all of your submissions that you've gotten all at once. Um, not much has changed here either. This is basically the just show me everything page. Again, likely to be replaced with views, but not quite there yet. We've also got some like subtler changes here uh, on the download page. So the download page is where you can take all of the information, all of the submissions that you've received, and then export them down to Excel or a CSV or a TSV so that you can like process them in your in your favorite spreadsheet application. But now we've got uh, a real nice change in that the Excel files that you download, previously we were, we were totally cheating. I don't think most people noticed, but when you downloaded a, an Excel file previously, it really wasn't an Excel file. It was a, a tab-separated value file that just had the extension changed from TSV to XLS and then Excel would open it and pretend it was an Excel file, which was a glorious hack and worked for like a lot of years, but added some like weird, funny problems with UTF-8 encoding. It would be strange from time to time. You would lose new lines or it would break the importer, depending on which version of Excel you used. Um, all kinds of weird problems, time zone problems. And now uh, we ship out of the box with a built-in native Excel exporter. So now when you download an Excel file, it's a real XLSX file, which means all of those problems all go away, which is a, a huge boon. So, oh yeah, and we also have some other new abilities. So this is when you do the export. It now uses batch API, so it doesn't matter how small or big your, your Excel file is, and that could, now can do hundreds of thousands of rows. And so this is an export that used Batch API and then export to Excel. And not a lot of people know this, but Webform also has pluggable exporters. So you can turn on different exporters, too. And what this is demonstrating is there's a, a module called Webform Google Exporter that allows you to set up an API key with Google Drive. And then you can export, does the same thing, uses Batch API, generates an Excel file. But then it sends it over to Google Drive. And so here, this is using OAuth 
choosing which account to sign in with, and then now it's on Google Docs, which is pretty cool. So no need to download the file and then upload it again. If you prefer to use Google Docs or have a company that uses Google Docs all the time, you can just export directly now, uh, right from WebForm, right into Google Docs, which is really cool. And again, a, a benefit of using that Excel native exporter because Google reads in those XLSX X files, and then, um, yeah, you've got a perfect import every time. It's great. So some other new features. Uh, we have, uh, oh yeah, I mentioned this, built-in views integration for both submissions and data now. Uh, so you can make a listing of pretty much of anything you possibly could want. Um, we now have a, a built-in Drush exporter. So if you, you guys, any Drush fans in the room, there's now a, a new Drush command, uh, Drush WFX for web form export. And it has all of the options that you can get from the normal exporting page. Uh, and it also uses batch API, so you can export anything you want to with Drush. We have, uh, I'm not really sure what the use case is for this, but it keeps coming up that people want to do some weird thing where they want to generate an Excel file like on a nightly basis and then email it to somebody. And now that's possible. Because <laughs> you, can, you can just simply set up a, a, like a cron job or something like that on your server, um, run Drush web form export, and then mail the result and you can get those nightly updates of Excel files for whatever purpose. Like, I imagine it's for some kind of uh, like continuous integration thing or something like that. Now totally possible. Um, improved conditional email sending options, that's the thing I mentioned earlier, where now when you use the select list, you have much better options for choosing where those emails go to. Um, tighter integration with form builder module. So form builder module is not required, um, but it can really make a huge difference to your end users. Uh, WebForm and Form Builder work really well together. Form Builder basically is a drag and drop interface for constructing your forms that can really speed up the process of creating a form. And we're going to do that in the demo too. Um, we have things, we, we enabled cookie only tracking finally. Um, there's a, a common complaint or, yeah, a common complaint with WebForm 3 that if you restricted users to say only fill out one submission ever, if you had two people like that would use the same computer, like logged in, logged out, or um, a bunch of people behind a firewall or a router, they would all be considered the same person, basically. And now you can disable that IP checking and use like a more lenient uh, cookie-based checking so that you don't end up with users not being able to fill out the form. Um, in addition to HTML5 elements, we've added HTML5 placeholders. So the placeholder text that you know, will fill in a, a particular field um, until the user clicks in it. Uh, and we added uh, customizable CSS classes, so just like views and panels, how you can specify individual classes that you want for all of your fields. There's now built-in UI options for that. Uh, and we also did a, a, a job real recently. We stopped using any designers that are in the room that might appreciate this or front-end devs. We stopped using IDs everywhere that was possible and switched them all to using classes. So now if you've got the same web form on the, the page for more than one time for some reason, you don't end up with all of the IDs changing on you and all of your CSS breaking. So just, it's the small things. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to go through a um, couple of web form like tricks, basically. Like there are some fun things you can do with web form that not everybody is aware of. Um, so I always like going through the, these these tricks. So web forms are nodes. Um, that's an ingrained part of how web form works. Um, but because they're nodes, that means you can do all of these other things that you can do with nodes. You can you can use node clone module, you can use node export module, you can use scheduler, you can use any access control module like OG or taxonomy access or whatever. And all of those things work great with web forms. So if you enable like the node clone module uh, and node export module, then you get these tabs on your pages, uh, on, on all of your web form nodes that you can say clone and you can immediately take a web form and then make a copy of it. Or if you have the node export module turned on, then you get this export tab, and you can get like a JSON representation of a web form. If you want to build a web form on like a development or local host, export it into JSON, just copy and paste that into your live server, then you can do that because it's all just nodes, basically. Um, if you haven't used this module before, I highly suggest you use it. Even if you don't use Form Builder, Form Builder depends on it, but there's a great module called Options Element. And Options Element simply 
gets rid of this terrible pattern that we have in Drupal of giving users a big text area and telling them to type something, pipe value, you know, like key pipe value. I think that's a terrible user design pattern to ask users to type into a text field that ultimately will turn into a list of select options. And so with options element, uh, it takes those same fields, web form just will swap it out and use options element instead, which gives you this much nicer interface of hiding the keys entirely. It'll automatically create keys for you uh, that are just integers. And if you want to, the user can still click on like this customize keys option right down below and enter in manual keys if they feel the need to do that. But for the most part, your users shouldn't ever really need to worry about your keys. And so this hides that option from them, basically. Another fun thing you can do, this is with uh, the token support in WebForm. I realize this is probably, oh, you guys can probably see that just fine. Um, so you can use tokens uh, to populate the default values of any field. And it's really common that you'll want to populate some information about the page that the user is currently on. Like if you make WebForm uh, some particular web form into a block. Web form has the option to turn any form into a block, and then you can place it anywhere on the site that you want. It's common that people use this for like a, a feedback form that lives permanently in the sidebar or in a modal or something like that. And then when the user fills out the form, you usually want to know what page they were on when they filled out the submission form, if they, especially if it's like feedback on this particular page. And so you can do something like you can make a hidden field on the page and then populate it with a token, like current page URL absolute. That will give you the full URL of the page that the user is currently on when they're filling out the form. So it populates a hidden field, and then when they submit the form, you'll have that information when it comes into your inbox. And so you can see exactly if they say, you know, the alignment is off in your headline or the image is smashed into the sidebar if it's a layout problem, then you can immediately know what page that it, it was that they're talking about. So this is what that looks like. So if it, even if it's a hidden field, the user will never be able to see it. They won't know that they're submitting this value. But then when you get that email in from, or email or, or look at the submission in the results page, it will populate that hidden field. Um, also with tokens, uh, it's really common that people want to pre-populate fields, not with stuff that is known, but like uh, pre-populate it with something from like the URL. Like if you have a, um, let's say you have uh, a, a particular node, or like let's say that on DrupalCon's website, uh, the session submissions, like or um, evaluations. Like you might want to have a link to a survey that says, you know, evaluate this session. But you want to pre-populate a field, whether it's a hidden field or a select list or whatever, with the session that the user is evaluating. You can do that by generating a, a specific link that just has a query string at the end of it, and then link to that uh, particular web form, and then populate, again, the default value of some field with uh, the query string. So this is using the special token current page query foo, for example. And then in your browser, you make a link to whatever the, the web form is, uh, question mark foo equals whatever value you want it to be. And then I'll pre-populate that field, whether it's a hidden field or a text field or a uh, select list, it doesn't matter what. So it makes it so basically web form has it, a built-in ability to pre-populate any field from the URL. Uh, and lastly, if Sending HTML or pretty emails is important to you. Um, WebForm now supports both MimeMail and HTML mail, both excellent projects um, that enable you to send full HTML rich text emails to your users. And WebForm has built in uh, integration with both of them. So it makes it so that if you want to send an HTML email to a user, um, you can actually include all of the exact same CSS that you see like uh, when you're viewing a submission. You can send all of that CSS and markup to a user's inbox and have a really nicely formatted uh, submission that's delivered via email. You can also turn on this option to include all files as attachments. So whenever, if you have a file field in your uh, web form to do things like upload an image or PDF or a resume or something like that. When the user s attaches that file to their submission and it's send, you can send that attachment or send that file as an attachment in the email. Okay, 
So I'm going to do, do a little bit of a hands-on demo here of um, some of the new things that we can do. So this is the first email that I've got, uh, or first web form that I've got. And I'm just going to do some, oh, <laughs> you guys can't see anything yet. One second. There we go. OK. So in this simple example, I've just got a contact form. This is by far like the most common use case for web form, uh, where you just want to have a, a form that has a few fields here for subject, your name, uh, email, and then uh, like a file, I guess, if you want to send, send some information. And so to, to walk through the interface, so like here's the main components page. And you might want to do something like uh, add in a new thing for like who, which, which group or person you want to contact. So maybe I have a thing for department. And this is going to be a select list or radio buttons. And then here's this list of options here that if I had not used, if, if I didn't have the options element uh, module enabled, I'd get something much more like this, where you would just have to enter in, you know, like uh, general support and sales or something like that. Um, but if you have if you have uh, options element turned on, then you could do the same thing. Um, only do it in sort of a much friendlier manner. And then select which default value you want to have. So that's uh, generally the process of adding a component. And then you can see here that I've now got um, radio button options here for, for which department to send to. So now if I were to, to take this same, uh, this same form, so I've already got a couple of emails set up here. I've got one that is set up uh, a hard-coded email to just fill out to like nate at localhost dot localhost. Uh, and then I also have an email here to send a receipt back to the user uh, who filled out the form. So in this case, uh, it's saying the email to address is going to be the value of a component, which is the your email value. And then you can customize everything about that email. You can give it a custom subject. So you can say, you know, thank you for contacting us. Uh, you can choose like who it's from, the from address, the from name, uh, and then you can customize the template for each individual email that you configure. So in this case, this is pretty much the default template, but if you're sending this back to the user who filled out the form, you probably want to do something more like say, you know, uh, thanks for contacting us. You know, we've got your message. And then say like, uh, you know, here's a copy for your records or something like that. So, and then using tokens, uh, any token that's supported in web form, you can add any token you want in here. So uh, here's a copy for your records, and then that will list out a copy of the entire submission, basically. And if you want to, you can use, there's a token for basically every individual field and value. So if you want to pull out individual values, and you know, thank you for contacting the blank department, you know, blank will be back in touch with you soon. You can do all of those things by pulling out the individual field values. So, and if you wanted to do, like I just set up that department one, so this is getting a little bit elaborate because it's pretty unusual. You would have three emails on something. But for this department field, uh, you can see here that we're still ch selecting it based on a component. So based on the value of the department field that is submitted, we will send a user or send an email to a particular user. And this is where you'd fill out individual things. Like you would say joe uh, at example.com if it's general or... Uh, support is just support at example.com, and sales is like Seth at example.com, for example. And if you wanted to, you could also say, you know, Matt at example.com. So you can comma separate them and then send as many emails as you want um, based on the option that was selected. So now when this thing fills out, um, you'll get three emails. Well, somebody will get three emails. So if I want to say, you know, interested in your project, so this is, this is pre-populated with my username. Um, and that's because that's, that's the way that the form is set up. So there's a token here to say populate with the user's current name. It doesn't have to be that way. And then based on which one of these departments I have, it's going to email 
uh, a different thing. Since those are all example.com emails, I'm not actually sure what's going to happen here um, <laughs> because uh, uh, I'm not sure that the internet will actually like me sending emails like that. So anyway, sent the form, and now in my email over here, um, so I sent a couple emails to localhost. So I should now get, so here we go. So here are the two emails. So this is the one that was the first one um, that is the email that used the subject that the user filled out and sent it to the administrator. And then this is the one that, uh, since I was both the sender and the receiver, this is the receipt email that came back to me that said, you know, thanks for contacting us. So it's got a different subject and it's got a different template and different things that are all coming in. So you can set up as many different emails as you want, set them up with different subjects, set them up with different bodies, do whatever. So with the same example, I also want to um, go over some of the new abilities that we can do with like the, the new analytics that we have. So right now, when we look at the web form uh, and we look at the results, so all of those submissions that come through, you can get all of them uh, both in email and it records all of them. But then we can also look at uh, the analysis of, of e all of these values that got filled out. So this currently only has, you know, I've only had filled out this form once um, that has this department field filled out. But if I were to go and turn on uh, the web form charts module, which the web form charts module is just, you know, drupal.org slash project slash web form charts. And this module uh, works with uh, a couple of different, well, the charts module, I should say, Works with a couple of different options. You can use Google Charts if you want, or you can use High Charts module or High Charts library. Either one will work. The uh, um, Google Charts solution is really great because uh, it doesn't require any additional downloads or libraries or anything. It'll just pull Google Charts right out of the internet basically and start using it. But if you are in a situation where you don't have reliable internet, um, then you might want to use like High Charts because you can use a local copy of it. So I've got high charts going on right now uh, on this individual uh, local host. And when I go back to that uh, page where I look at my web form results, um, now I've got charts here for each one of those analysis things going on. And it's also nice, like, this is one of those not so useful charts where I've got like a, a text field. So this is how many people left the field blank and how many people filled it out. Um, if you want to, you can add or remove um, as many of the fields as you want. So you can get analysis on more of the fields if there are fields that you want additional information on or if you want less information on. And in addition, for each one of these, we can go into these chart options here. And if, this, if I had a slightly larger screen, these would be side by side. But in this case, um, you can choose like which chart you want and it will change the chart type right there. And then if you want to do things like uh, um, change the individual colors, on things, uh, you can do that really easily just by you know selecting the thing right here, and it will update it. If you were using Google Charts, it wouldn't use it; it wouldn't quite do it on the fly. Um, a little bit more limited on the API side, but with High Charts, like as you modify the things, it immediately updates the chart, and then it will remember that chart configuration. And then everywhere you use this chart, either as a token or looking at the results, it will save all of those settings. So you can have pie charts or graph charts or whatever kind of chart you want. Um, oh yeah, so a nice thing about doing charts like this is really now if, if you combine web form with charts, you basically have a really advanced pull solution. So you can stop using pull basically for whatever reason and replace, web, replace them with web forms if you so choose. It requires a little bit more setup. But let's say, you know, I'm going to make an advanced pull here. And so on the normal node page, you just scroll down to the bottom and then actually start working on things. So I'm going to have like question one and say that this is a little select options and then have three choices. Probably make that required. Uh, and then have a second question. So normally with poll module, right, you only get one question. So if you had some situation where you had multiple questions, this would be a good uh, a good choice or a good option. And then again, make it required. Okay. So now we've got form that has two questions. Now select one, select another, 
you know, and then it, it, I'm just populating it with some data. And then when I go and look at the web form results uh, on this analysis page, you immediately get the charts that are for each one of those things. Apparently, I selected the same thing twice or something that wasn't very exciting. But anyway, so we've got charts for each one of those things. Uh, and just like before, like we can customize these charts to make them uh, whatever style or whatever we want. And then save the configuration of that chart. So now we've got two charts right there. And then what we can do is we can go to the configuration page for this overall form. So we've got this confirmation message, which if you leave blank, it just says, you know, thanks for contacting us. Um, but if we wanted to, we could populate this um, using the token browser. So if you enable the token module, then you get this browser. And under the nodes section, there's a section in here for uh, web form charts now. So you can enter in a token here for web form charts. Unfortunately, you have to populate the key manually. Um, so this is based on the key from the, uh, from the component that we set up. So make a message of some kind and then have tokens for each one of those individual charts, for example. Let me make sure I got that right. Okay, looks, looks okay. So now, when we go back here and we fill out these, these individual choices, when we submit these, Things and then hit submit. Uh, you know, we get this nice thing. You know, thanks for voting. Here are the current results, and then basically you get the results of the uh, the results of the poll right there in line on the confirmation page. So pretty neat option as an alternative to polls. Um, definitely much more sophisticated. You still get all of the recording of things, um, but much more flexible in its configuration and how how you treat it. So that's all I've got for this, this set of examples, but now I'm gonna move on to a sec second one. Um, so this second example that I've set up is all about um, multiple pages and conditional options. So some of the new things that we can do in Web Form 4. So uh, right now, the way this form is set up is it's a form that has a bunch of components that are all individually listed out here, um, and it's got three pages. So right now, uh, if I were to fill out this form, I have some conditional options set up here. So on the first page, I have this question for course bringing, uh, and then it's got a set of different options here. So uh, whether or not it's main course, appetizers, dessert, or whatever. Um, and then if that option is, is selected, then I'm going to show another field sort of that matches that individual thing. And if you were to add another thing, you can see here like the interface here for selecting these things is actually, I think, really pretty nice. Um, where when you select an individual thing, um, it gives you relevant uh, conditionals. So like for dates, for example, you can say like before or after something. So if a user enters a date before some date or after some date, then you can show fields. Uh, or if it's a, a select list, it'll show you the select lists. Uh, or if it's just a text field, then it will, it'll give you a text field for, for matching that individual thing. So getting this back to uh, where we started here, uh, so right now we've got a single page or a multiple page form, and when you fill it out, um, sure you know the barbecue on September 30th, uh, and then you know you're going to say I'm going to bring in the main course and I'm going to bring some appetizers, and this has also got select or other module turned on. So if you were to select, um, oh <laughs> never mind it doesn't. Forget I said that. <laughs> All right. Um, so because I've select main course and appetizers then uh, you have get, the, get these options here where the main course options are shown and then the appetizers option is shown. And actually, here's where I was thinking about that. Where I, I don't know if your main course, I don't know, you're going to bring bacon as the main course. Um, and then appetizers. Sure. And so what that has done, basically, well, if I were to go back here and say, oh, actually, you know what, I'm not bringing appetizers, I'm going to bring dessert and then go on to the next page, what will happen is the appetizers field will disappear, the dessert field is there instead. So that's the conditional logic actually in action here. If you were to do something like um, this field isn't actually required, uh, if you were to say I'm not bringing anything, then that entire page, Webform is smart enough to just skip the entire page. It will check all of the individual fields, and if there are no fields left that match any conditions, then it will skip the page entirely, which is pretty smart. 
And then if you hit previous page, it's also smart enough to know that there's still nothing there, so it'll skip back over the page when it goes backwards. So let's say I'm going to bring, you know, it still remembers this thing, uh, and then, you know, send some comments and then send it in there. So this is the new functionality, though, is that you could do this sort of thing in Web Form 3, but it was a lot more complicated to set up because the conditionals were a hassle. But now, in Web Form 4, you can just delete this page break in between if you wanted to. I'll just delete both of them. Uh, just to make it so that this is all like a single page form now. And now, with a single page form, you can see here that it's just um, name, and then the date, and then the course bringing, and then comments. But when you check these individual things, you get that field showing or hiding on the same page. So, and you can be pretty sophisticated about it. Like this appetizers field is required if it's shown. But if it's not shown, like if you uncheck that and then submit the form anyway, it doesn't hassle you about the fact that that hidden required field wasn't filled out. So it's smart enough to only require a field if it's actually used, which is pretty cool. Let's see. And then I got one last example here. So all of those other examples, uh, uh, those are all mostly web form out of the box um, with web form charts and select or other. Uh, if you want to, uh, really ease the burden on your form builders. If you're going to be building a site that has a whole bunch of forms, um, you might consider uh, turning on the form builder module. So the form builder module is a separate project. And what the form builder module does, well, it replaces this page, this interface. So instead of having this components page like this, uh, where you've got uh, to sort of go through and do all of these individual pages all at, all at uh, one at a time. If you turn on the form builder module and the form builder web form UI module that comes with it, then that page then becomes something entirely different. So this is the same page on the web form tab, only now it's, it's given the form builder interface. It has the same functionality as web form, only now when you want to do things like um, add a select field or a text list, um, you can just drag it in, um, change the list of options. So again, this is uh, options element. And as you're changing these things, uh, you can do things like uh, um, you know, set the size to something smaller, prefix, suffix. I mean, this doesn't make any sense. Um, make it required. And you can see that like, as I'm doing this, it's Ajax updating it at the same time. And then you can bulk edit the entire form all at once. And then when you're done, go down here and save. And then you've sort of bulk modified the form all at once using Form Builder. So Form Builder, really great, um, great project. You, it's really easy to set up in Drupal 7 because Drupal 7 includes jQuery UI built into core. So it uses jQuery UI to basically add all of that drag and drop functionality. Um, without adding any external libraries or anything. So I think um, as far as this uh, hands-on stuff goes, that, that's pretty much it for that. I think we're, we're ready to move on to questions. Is there a, a moderator with a microphone in the room by chance? No. Okay. In that case, you're just going to have to shout the question really loud, um, and then I'll repeat it for everybody else. So, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. So the, que the question was, is the um, data that is saved, is it still split into web form data and web form submissions? Yeah, it, they're still the same two database tables that there were before, um, where the web form submissions, like a list of submissions is stored in one table, and then all of the data for all of the web forms all combined is all in another table. So it's a really simple database schema. Um, but the views integration, um, it, it whenever you make a listing of, of web form submissions, in order to pull out the data, you have to add a relationship to pull out the individual fields, basically. Uh, and the relationship enables you to do things like filters and sorts and things like that. So basically, it does a join on the data table for every sort or filter that you need. So if you have three sorts or three filters, then it joins the table three times. Yeah. So it makes it so you have all the same capabilities as you would normally if used, but a really simplified data structure for better or worse. Like it scales better, but um, at the same time, it's not quite as uh, robust when it comes to displaying the results. Yeah, over here.
Oh yeah, okay. So what about what about Drupal 8? Um, which is a great question. So uh, we have a plan for porting, or porting Webform to Drupal 8. Um, there's a, a team of people that are interested in, in porting it right now. Um, two new contributors that, um, that I'm not actually familiar with, but I've already granted them uh, maintainership of the project, so they're starting to port it right now. Um, and I also know that um, Chris Vanderwater, Eclipse GC, has also expressed some interest in maintaining it. So I think that, um, yeah, Drupal 8 will, will definitely have a future, but I'm not really sure, like, you know, with Drupal 8 still being heavily developed right now, I'm pretty sure that it's kind of a long way out yet from a port. Was that a question? No, you just, yeah. Okay, so didn't we make any improvements about creating and modifying web forms programmatically? Do you have any specific examples of what was difficult in Web Form Three? Mm. Okay. Yeah, so, okay, so is it possible to individually, like, unit test the, the submissions? Uh, uh, okay, yeah, programmatically creating a web form. So, um, I wouldn't say that it's actually changed hardly at all from, from Web Form 3, but I don't think that it's particularly difficult to actually test. Um, it's, it's just that what you really have to think about Web Forms from a content perspective, which I know is kind of difficult because it feels like site building, but Web Forms model of Web Forms basically being nodes means that you can treat them like nodes even when it comes to creating them and updating them, that all that you really need to do is build out a stub node object and then call node save on it and that will create the associated web form. Or if you want to update a web form, uh, load the node out of the database, and then the node object, node arrow web form, contains the entire web form configuration, all of the conditionals, even the chart configuration, and then you can modify any of those, those settings and then call node save, and then you've updated the form. Um, actually testing those um, in like simple tests or something like that, um, Webform includes actually its own testing suite, which I'm not sure if, you, if you've looked at before, but it does exactly that, where it tests by creating forms via a large array, basically, calling node save on it, and then it uses a web test, of course, because I really, yeah, there's, there's no unit testability because there's so much stuff that is all, it basically is it's creating a front-end form, and there's not really, in Drupal at least, any separation between the form and, like, there isn't a way to test a form programmatically, really. Yeah, so is there any documentation on the actual structure of the, the web form key? Um, you know, I don't think there, there specifically is documentation on how it is, but it's very consistent. Even between web form 3 and web form 4, it's almost identical. Um, and the easiest way to go about it is to use Devel module and just click the Devel tab on, on, a, on a web form node and just look at the structure that way. Yeah, yeah, may, maybe, um, yeah, maybe something that's more built out would be, be good, but it's really, yeah, um, just enable Devel, I'm not sure that I've got it on here. Oh, well, I don't even have Devel module available. I wish I could just show you, but it's it's really easy to inspect, but yeah, there, there's no hard documentation, but we could, because, I mean, it's a very consistent structure, and we don't change it, um, for because if you did change it, you'd be breaking the API, so... It's 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 very consistent though. A, yes. Will it support multilingual? Okay, so multilingual stuff um, with Webform is historically very challenging. Actually, there's a, a module called Webform Localization, 
um, which is the best stab at it thus far. Um, Webform attempts to make it uh, possible, or at least it, it tries to inform translation systems about all of the possible things that could possibly be configured. Like you want to translate um, the label of a form, or the label of a field, and the description of a field, and the placeholder of a field, but you don't necessarily want to translate like whether or not it's required. That wouldn't make any sense. So Webform already exposes that information about what stuff is translatable and what stuff isn't. Um, but there isn't actually any UI around uh, configuring any of that, or uh, around translating it. So it sort of outsources that, like most modules do, unfortunately, to another, <laughs> to another module to actually deal with the translation. Um, I would imagine Drupal 8, this is a little bit premature because porting hasn't actually begun yet, but I imagine in Drupal 8 what would be a natural fit for Webform is that we, we would actually move web forms most likely to configuration. So we would use YAML files to represent um, the configuration of an individual web form and just bind a web form to a node. So it would still kind of act the same, but in the process, instead of generating like something that is part of the node as content, you would actually be generating configuration. And the reason why we would want to do that is because of the um, configuration translation ability. Like if you went to Gabor's session earlier today, which was amazing when he showed like how the translate tab on individual like settings pages. Um, in theory, as, if, as long as web forms were configuration, that would automatically become available. If that ha feature happens in Drupal 8 and web forms are used as configuration, then both of those things combined would just kind of automatically give you that, which would be great. Any other? Oh, yeah. Okay, so the question was, is it possible to combine web forms with other forms, like the user registration form, um, and make them sort of all, all combined all, all together? I wouldn't say that it's very easy at all, actually. <laughs> um, I think the only way you could probably manage that, um, well, a couple of different ways. You could make a custom web form component for like registration. So web form has the ability to have pluggable fields just like field module does. And you can make a field that specifically was like for user registration. Um, so that, that's one way to tackle it. But probably the easiest way to tackle it is just to cheat and take um, the user registration form and you just kind of like take a web form and form alter in the user registration stuff and then add an extra submit handler on the web form. So web form is very hackable in terms of form altering. So you can set up the entire web form and then alter it to make it do whatever you want, including combining registration at the same time. And that's probably how I would tackle it in that situation. Any others? Mm -hmm. What was that? I, I, sorry, I really can't hear you. Uh-huh, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so I mentioned using um, web forms as blocks. Can you use Ajax to submit the form um, when it's used as a block? Is that is that the whole thing? Okay. Um, <laughs> No. <laughs> at least, at least I don't, there isn't a way to do it built out of the box. Um, I think that there are some modules like Ajax submit module, and there might be like a web form Ajax module that might add that functionality. But thus far, we don't have any Ajax ability built into web form. It could be a nice feature, um, regardless of whether it's in a block. I would think that if we added Ajax functionality, we would add it pretty much everywhere. I've seen it done before, but I haven't actually implemented that myself. So I know that there's add-on modules and ways to do it, but um, off the top of my head, I can't, can't answer that, unfortunately. Any others? Yeah? Okay. 
Okay, I think I think I got that. Um, it was a question about um, oh boy, um, using a, a view in a web form to like populate a select list to make a node reference, for example. Okay, gotcha. Um, yeah, that's a feature that that I really wish did exist. So web form allows you to um, let's not do it with this one. Um, allows you to use pre-populated select lists um, in a lot of cases. So on this select list, for example, there's an option down here for like pre-populated select lists here. So you can do things like uh, um, days of the week and it will automatically populate the days of the week into the select list. And it has like countries of the world and, um, and United States, basically. And in theory, you can put anything you want into this select list, including views. Um, so you can make like a, a, a node reference thing by, pop, by creating a view and then using it as a pre-built select list and then you would effectively have a node reference um, field, basically. Um, but out of the box, Webform doesn't provide an option for um, reusing views as, um, as pre-built select lists, though there is a contrib module that adds on that functionality, although the name eludes me at the moment. Um, I do think that that functionality should be built into Webform core, though. Um, so, so given an opportunity, um, I think that there's uh, a patch in the queue that is, is being worked on. But if that opportunity were, if it were to be finished, I would be more than happy to incorporate that into the project. Um, so that way we would have some semblance of like the ability to do node references or any pre-populated list based off of a view. So again, not, not immediately uh, available, but um, planned. And right here. What was that? Okay. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so calculations. Um, let's say, like, a, if you were using a spreadsheet that um, you know had field A, field B, and you had to add them or sum them or or do something with them. What I would suggest you do um, is views. That it, it takes some serious views foo, but you can totally do that with views, um, where you can use um, one view that just like pulls out all of the web form submitted data, and then um, you can add a, an attachment to the bottom of it and turn on aggregation, which allows you to do SQL counts and sums and things like that. And then you can take the data from your view and then in the attachment do the aggregates. So you can count or sum or average or, or do anything you want all through views. And because Webform now exposes all of its data to views, you can now use views aggregate functions to calculate all that information in a view. So yeah, to totally works. It's really neat, actually. And then you can take those that charts module that I showed you also has full views integration. So then you can take all of that chart information and you can do like submissions per day or whatever you want. You can chart you can chart all of that stuff. So I I think we're all out of time. Um, so thank you guys so much for coming and uh, have have a good DrupalCon. <laughs>